finding volumes of composite 3D figures 11.2c. We have five previous videos for chapter 11 that could be very important to keep you from becoming lost or confused. If you go to the description, you'll be able to click on the geometry playlist and watch those. In video 11.2a, we learned the formula for the volume of a prism with base area b and height h is the volume is equal to the base times the height. And the formula for the volume of a prism with length L, width W, and height H is the volume is equal to the length times width times height. We also learned the volume of a cube with edge length S is volume is equal to S cubed, the side length cubed. And in video 11.2b, we learned the formula for the volume of a cylinder. Its volume is equal to base times height, or we could say volume is equal to pi r squared h for radius squared and height, and that pi r squared would be the base. We can find the volume of a composite three-dimensional figure by finding the volume of each separate figure, then finding the sum of their volumes. Here we have a rectangular prism that measures three by three by two, and it's sitting on top of another rectangular prism that measures six by six by two. We find the volume for the yellow one, and we find the volume for the blue one, and we add them together. For the yellow one, we have length times width times height. It's 3 times 3 times 2. That's 18 units cubed, whatever the units are, inches, centimeters, meters. This one would be 6 times 6 times 2, or 72 units cubed. For the composite figure, we add them together, and we get 90 units cubed. Here we have four cubes, and they're stacked on top of each other. So what would be the volume of the composite figure? It would be all the cubes together. Well, it's showing that the side length of this one is one centimeter. And if it's a cube, well, then that means the width is a centimeter, the length is a centimeter, and the height is a centimeter. Same with the second one. It would be two by two by two. If this side is a four and it's a cube, then the measurements would be four by four by four. And this would be 6 by 6 by 6. They're cubes. We could total them up, find the volume of this one. It would be 6 cubed, or 216. For this one, it would be 4 cubed, or 64. For this one right here, it would be 2 cubed, or 8. And we'd add it to the 1 times 1 times 1. The total would be 289 centimeters cubed for the composite figure. We need to find the volume and round to the nearest tenth. So, I have them split apart right now so you can see what's going on. We have a triangular prism, and this cylinder is sitting on it like this, so it's making a composite figure. The first thing we do is find the base area of this prism. And base is going to equal half times this 6 times this 8. It's half times 48, or 24 meters squared. That's for this triangular area right here. So the volume of the prism is volume equals base times height. We have a height of 9 meters. This 5 meters is the height of the cylinder. So we're going to do this 24 meters times this 9 and get 216 meters cubed for the volume of the prism. Now we're going to work on the cylinder. The cylinder's diameter equals the hypotenuse of this prism's base. We have a right triangle here, so we can say a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find that pink hypotenuse. That means 6 squared plus 8 squared equals that hypotenuse, and that's going to give us the diameter of the cylinder. 36 plus 64 is equal to the square root of 100. Square root of 100 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. So we know that the diameter is 10 meters. Radius is half the diameter, so the radius must be 5 meters. Now we can use the volume of the cylinder formula, and we'll do pi times that 5 meters squared times that height 5. That's going to be 25 times 5, or 125 
pi meters cubed for the volume of the cylinder. So remember, we had the volume of the prism as 216. Now we've got the volume of the cylinder as 125 pi. The total volume of the figures is the sum of the volumes. It's the 216 for the prism and the 125 pi for the cylinder. We can do 125 times pi, hitting the pi key on our calculator. We get this nice long decimal number. We add it to the 216 of the prism and rounding it to the nearest tenth, we get approximately 608.7 meters cubed for the volume of the composite figure. We found each volume separately and then added them together. Here we've got this composite figure. It looks like it could kind of be like a roll of toilet paper or paper towels. We need to find the volume and round it to the nearest tenth. We need to find the volume of the yellow shaded portion. We find the volume of the entire cylinder and subtract the volume of the non-yellow center. We can see the radius from this center point is 10 inches for the entire thing. For this non-yellow center, the radius is only 5 inches. We can also see we have a height of 15 inches. So for the entire thing, we would have volume equals pi radius squared times height. So that would be 10 squared times the 15. That would be 100 times 15 or 1500 pi. And comes out approximately to 4,712.4 inches cubed. For this non-yellow center, we've got a radius of 5, so it's going to be 5 squared in the formula. That's going to give us 25 times 15, or 375 pi, which is approximately 1,178.1. We subtract this amount from this amount, and we find that the yellow shaded area's volume is 3,534.3 inches cubed, approximately, because we were dealing with pi. So we can use this subtraction method to find the volume of a Bundt cake pan. You just find the volume of the entire thing, then find the volume of this cylinder in the middle and subtract it from the whole thing. Even if you needed to find the volume of concrete needed to surround a garden, if we've got a length and a width for the concrete and a depth, that would be its height, and we have the length and width for the area that's going to be cut out in the middle, we could find the volume of the entire rectangular prism, which would be this length A times the length B times the depth. Then we would do the length and width of the garden area and subtract it from the whole thing to find out how much concrete we would need. Now take a look at this figure. We have a cylinder with a rectangular prism inside of it. It says find the volume of the composite figure round to the nearest tenth. If this is a solid rectangular prism, that means the volume of the composite figure is the yellow shaded portion around the edge. It's going to be the difference between the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the rectangular prism. So imagine the cylinder is hollow and empty, but this prism is a solid block of wood, and they're looking for the volume around that block of wood. Okay, So we can see the radius is 3 centimeters, and we can see the height of the cylinder is 5 centimeters. So if you look at the diagram, this circle is circumscribed about the square of the base of that prism, isn't it? See that? And we know this red line is our 3 centimeter radius, which is going to be 3 centimeters no matter what direction we go in. So for the square, since that vertex is touching the circle, we know that this right here is 3 centimeters. And if that's 3 centimeters, then this must be 3 centimeters. And using the Pythagorean theorem, we can say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we'll be able to get this length right here of this side. So 3 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. And that means we have a 9 plus 9 equals c squared, or 18 equals c squared. We remove the 2, put a radical sign around the 18. We get the square root of 18 is c. The square root of 18 is this side length. And it's a square, so all the sides are the same length, right? So we get approximately 4.2426, and it went on, 
So this is going to be the length and width of the prism of the base. We know that it's five centimeters tall. The length times width times height would be the 4.2426 times 4.2426 times that five height. That's gonna give us 89.99, should be approximately, right here. Now that we have that, we find the volume of the cylinder with our formula. The volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height. We know the radius was 3, so that's 3 times 3, that's 9, times the height 5, that's 45 pi. We do it on the calculator, 45 times, we hit the pi key, we get approximately 141.4 centimeters cubed. We take this amount and subtract the prism from it, and we get 51.4 centimeters cubed for that shaded area of the composite figure, that yellow shaded area. So that's it for 11.2. We're going to move on to 11.3, which is split into A, B, and C. We're going to start with the volume of pyramids, then do the volume of cones, and then we're going to talk about cube roots in 11.3C. Make sure you have your volume formulas written somewhere where you can get to them quickly in your notes. And now you know how to find the volumes of composite 3D figures. Keep trying. I believe in you. I hope you do well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.